Hey folks, it's Matt Brown here from Horizon Beverage and welcome to another edition of Vineyard VIP. Today, Dan Goldfield has flown all the way out from California to join us for a couple days. Thanks for coming out. I appreciate it. Uh, why don't we tell the folks at home kind of a little bit how Dutton Goldfield started. I know uh, you did not start it from day one. Uh, there's a little bit of history behind that, which I've heard a couple times and it's a fascinating story. So why don't you tell the folks at home? We're a simple winery. Steve Dutton's fifth generation farmer. He's been growing, he still grows 250 acres of apples. He has 80 plus different vineyards around the Russian River Valley. And I'm a winemaker, so that's what we do. He grows the grapes, I make the wine. Actually, I was the winemaker at a place called La Crema, a little winery back in the early 90s. Uh, started a little winery called Hartford Court for Jess Jackson back in 1994. And my favorite growers was the Dutton family. So Steve and I became very good friends. We sourced and planted grapes through the Duttons for La Crema and Hartford Court. And over the years, as, as, as my brands at, at uh, the Kendall Jackson group grew, I wanted to do something on my own. Steve was a good friend, so we started Dutton Goldfield in 1998. And uh, we're now 2019, so we've been around a while, but in this business, that's just getting started. Uh, I'm going to ask you a loaded question. I know the answer, but I want the folks at home. Are you loaded for the no, question? Not, no, I wish it's been a long day already. Right. Well, um, we have two bottles here in front of us uh, Dutton Ranch Chardonnay, Dutton Ranch Pinot. Are those the only wines you make? No, so <laughs> Dan, go, I'm, I'm, I'm a Philadelphia boy and I'm a little ADD and, and, and kind of need to be active all the time. So we actually make 20 different single vineyard wines. Uh, but I know I yeah. I know I so, so we make 11 different single vineyard Pinots, a couple of Chardonnay, some of them Dutton Ranch or most of them Dutton Ranch. And then we get fruit from all the way down to Marin County and up through Mendocino County because it's where I like to go to play. I love the hills, I love the intricacies of the California coast. So we love sourcing and checking out new vineyards and in the long run we, we keep the same vineyards for a very, very long time but you're always learning something new. Um, and, and, and working with special new places in the world. But the core of our portfolio are two blends from Dutton Ranch, all from Dutton Ranch Vineyards. Um, Dutton Ranch Chardonnay, it's uh, just high citrus, high acid, just really focused wines but with the, the robes of malolactic fermentation and barrel. And, and this great fruit from really cool places, you can do kind of expressive winemaking, but the fruit's always what comes through. I say this because maybe if folks out, just, whether you're in a restaurant or in a, in a retail store, you just see one of these two, and then you see something like Rood Vineyard or Fox Den or Walker Hill, and I could go on for 18 or 20 more. Yeah. I won't do that. But just to let the folks at home that know that there are, and every single wine is going to be a little bit different. We just had a session downstairs with our staff. A lot different. Where we I shouldn't be making it. Yes, exactly. They're, they're not a lot where different. We tried all the wines, and I was, I was fascinated how totally different and, and all excellent in their own way. These wines were. It was, it was great. So well, credit to you. Um, Anything on the future? You still are you always looking at new vineyards, or you're always uh, on your mountain bike trying to find new uh, uncharted territories? And That's not what I'm on the mountain bike for, <laughs> but um, it maybe gives me an appreciation of the neighborhood. We're always looking for new things, but like the models of the wineries that I hugely admire, it's really about getting incrementally better from the places you truly truly love. So Walker Hill, Dutton Ranch, Walker Hill, Chardonnay, we've been making since the early early part of this century. And every year we try and get a little bit better making it, try and learn a little bit more of how we can hone our representation of that vineyard. And that said, as I play in different parts of the right. world, I'll try a few tons of something from here and there. Some of it sticks and some mm -hmm. of it doesn't. I'd be I'd be bored if I wasn't always looking for something. You're definitely not bored. More. You're not bored. You're not boring either. Yeah. So that's a good thing. Um, being in the wine business for a long time, my friends and my colleagues always ask me, "Say, Maggie, what's the best bottle of wine you ever had in your entire life?" And, and I don't have an answer for it because it doesn't matter about the bottle of wine in my mind. It's about the experience, who you have it with, what the occasion is. So I'm going to give you the loaded question: What's the best wine experience? I'm not the best bottle, but the best bottle of wine you had, and tell me about that experience. And, oh, no, the, and the first just don't question. forget. Don't forget. Just try to keep it peaceful. So I'll have, to get, I'll have to give you the second best experience. <laughs> That's fine. That's the first fine. we probably can put on the that. internet. Um, but in terms of the best bottle, wine is craftsmanship to me. So there is no best bottle, but there are wonderful representations from every part of the world. Yeah. Probably my most memorable that comes to mind right away experience in wine was back in 1977. I was taking my year off of college. My brother lived in New Jersey. He was, I was just getting into Burgundy's. We had, let's just say, an all-night wild night um, on the Jersey coast, came back to Philadelphia where I grew up, and there's a place called Admiral Liquors that's now gone that we should drive over the Tacony Palmyra Bridge to get wine from, and we knew they had one bottle left of 1969 DRC Richborg, and we had had like an all-night party, shall we say, on the beach in Atlantic City, 
And we were waiting, three grubby boys, I'm the youngest of three boys, three smelly grubby boys, <laughs> waiting for the, the, the liquor store to open, and at eight o'clock when they open, they figure we're there for some rock gut. We yep. had their last bottle of 69 DRC Reesburg for the $30 it went for at the time. And drank it very quickly, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, having just made that trip a couple weeks ago, this, um, over that bridge, uh, I was at a hockey tournament, and I took my, uh, my son there, and I said, look, we're gonna go get cheesesteak, so I'm gonna ask you a little question, hopefully you don't make any enemies. Uh, Geno's or Pat's? Oh, Pat, no brainer, it's uh, Pat's. Just making sure. My, my, my California belly can't really digest <laughs> it anymore, but I still go every time I'm in town. That was on the way from dead concerts. Every time we ever went in the spectrum, you hit Pat's on the way home. Well, speaking of those, it goes into my next For some question. reason, we were very hungry coming home. Why? From I don't know. Why? Maybe because we danced all night. Exactly. So, um, I always like that, and these was with a, a non-wine question. Um, you mentioned concerts. Uh, what is probably the best concert you've ever been to? You say, oh man, what a show that was. There's no best, but the most recent, wow, incredibly memorable concert was for New Year's Eve. We drove down to this wonderful place in Petaluma called the Mystic Theater, and Charlie Musselwhite, who's one of the great blues men of all times, was playing for New Year's Eve at, at, at the Mystic. And what made it amazing, number one, is we danced till two in the morning, um, but great musicians always want to play with greater musicians if they can. And the old guys, just like in winemaking, want to see the young guys be better than them. He had a guitarist that blew my mind. It was maybe 35, 40 years old. Charlie's in his mid-80s and still blows it incredibly. Right. And just, you could see the mutual respect and just everybody's boogie. So New Year's Eve, Perfect. Charlie Musselwhite's the last Perfect. amazing concert. Well, again, thanks for taking a few times for the folks out there. Uh, and again, safe travels back to the- uh, Thank Beatles. you. And, uh, Good to see you. And see you. We, Talking about Hartford Court a million years ago, that's when we first met. I was in 95. He's aged much better I was than me, six. but I worked. No, I was not six. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks.